Hi there. In this demonstration, we'll explore the flow along surface command. We'll be laying out objects on a flat surface and then applying them to a more complex form. We'll be using a couple of simple vase forms to show this technique. The scale that we'll be working at is relatively small, about 8 centimeters tall and 4 centimeters wide. The input curves for the surfaces should be very smooth. The first one was made using the control point curve, laid out points, and then be sure to tie the end point to the central axis. In the surface menu, I'll use the revolve command, specifying the start and end of the axis. Use a full circle or 360 degrees revolution. The second surface will be created using the loft command. Choose your curves in order at a similar starting point. Press enter, and then make sure that your direction and seams are aligned. Press enter again, and then loft. We now have two simple surfaces that will be ideal for this flow along surface. I've put a couple more in place just to show you what to avoid, and specifically that's sharp corners on your curves that can then create surfaces that are not ideal. I'll go through and create these surfaces, and I'll show you where the problem lies. Notice that the two resulting surfaces are in fact poly surfaces, meaning they're made up of more than one surface. We can use the explode command to show this. We now have separate surfaces that are joined together. This will create problems when we go to apply objects onto those surfaces. We'll now set up flow along surface by putting a couple of curves in place. Under the curve menu, I'll first use the curve from objects, extract iso curve, and I'll select the simple surface. I'm going to put a curve in place just along the bottom edge, and this will show us where the bottom is located. Press enter. We now have an extra little curve placed. Under the curve menu, curve from objects, I'll use Create UV Curves. Select the surface. Once that's been selected, you can now select additional points or curves on the surface. This is where we're going to select the circle, and then I'll press Enter. What this does is it lays that surface out flat. Now we can see what this would look like if the surface was unrolled. I'm going to position it a little bit differently. I'll rotate this around so that we can look at it with this line, the circle, along the bottom. Under the surface menu, I'll use planar curves and select the outer rectangle to create a surface. I'm now going to delete the rectangle just so that it doesn't get in the way. We'll now check the direction of the surfaces to make sure that when we apply them, we're going to get a good result. I'll select both surfaces to show their directions. Here we can see in white the surface normal pointing on the vase outward and on the flat surface upward. Those correspond properly. The green is the V direction. You can see here from the top it's pointing upwards, whereas on the vase it's pointing downwards. So this is something we're going to want to fix. And then we also want to verify the U direction, which is the red. On the vase, it's going left or counterclockwise, and it's going the opposite on the flat surface. I'll hit Escape, and then I'll highlight the single surface, turn on the direction. Here we're going to make some changes. So I want to reverse both the U and the V, and then I can double check them once more to make sure that they do align. We can also check the second vase, and we'll try to make it align in the same way. The surface normal is correct, but the U and the V need to be swapped. So we'll click on Swap UV. The V is in the right direction, but the U needs to be reversed so that it corresponds to the other surfaces, and press Enter. We're now going to start mapping and laying out objects on the flat surface. I'll start by laying a point on the corner. 
I'll select the point. Here I'm going to rectangular array that point using 14, and we'll use the fill option, 14 in the x direction, then 10 in the y direction, and 1 in the z. Press enter. Now we can go down to the opposite corner, and we have that number of points filling so that we end up with a grid. You do have the option to change these values, and you may need to depending on the design that you're laying out. I'll press enter. Now those are in place. I also want those grouped. Select all the points and then group them together. The first object I'm going to put in place is just a simple sphere with a five millimeter diameter. I'm now gonna copy this out so that we have multiples that can be applied onto the surface. Before I do that, I'm going to go a few steps further to make this a solid object. The way I'll do that, under the Surface menu, I'll say Offset Surface, flip the direction, I'll use a thickness of 1.5, press Enter. With this inside form, I'll use Blend Surface along the edge to create a third surface that joins the two together, press Enter. I'll leave those in place to be joined later. The sphere will also copy out using Rectangular Array. I'll move into the top view to show this. This time we'll use the unit cell option and I'll use the same values that were in place previously. 14, 10, and one in the Z, press enter. Then we'll snap in to the point and I'll draw it out to the next diagonal point and click. Shown in pink, it allows you to change your options before finalizing the command. I'm going to change the Y value to 8 so that we're not applying spheres onto the bottom of the surface. I'll also reduce the X count to 13, press Enter, because I know that along this seam edge, those two are going to wrap around and overlap. I'll now press Enter, and now we have spheres in place. These can be grouped. Now everything is set up for the command. Under the Transform menu, we'll use Flow Along Surface. At this point, I'm going to turn on Record History, and then I'll select the objects to flow, press Enter. I'll select a corner near the base, and this will correspond to a similar corner on the vase. I'll choose this bottom left. On the vase, I'll choose the bottom left. Notice that the result stretches the object and changes it depending on the surface. We can do this a little bit differently, and then I'll start Flow Along Surface, select the spheres, press Enter. Here we're going to keep the spheres rigid, not as groups. I'll now select the base surface, and then follow the prompt to select a similar corner on the target surface, and I keep selecting it in this area. Now the spheres have been applied onto the surface. We can actually move them around because we have the history recorded. Here I'll ungroup the spheres. I'll start moving them accordingly. I'm gonna move the top ones down a little bit and then I can play with further spacing. Notice as well that we can scale the objects in different ways, depending on what we want to end up with. We might want something that's a little bit less textured. This top row, I'm going to adjust, scale them a little longer, and maybe just move them up so that they start cutting into the rim of the base. I'll now move a little further along. I'll first join these surfaces together, all three of them, to create a solid object. This will break the history so that we can no longer make adjustments. The spheres will be ungrouped, and then we can start adding or cutting them away from the other object. With the solid base in place, I can Boolean difference the top edge.
then I can decide whether to Boolean union and create a raised texture, or Boolean difference, cutting into the surface. I'm now going to hide the first setup on a separate layer. I'll show the next one that I'm going to work on that I've done similarly. In this case, I'm going to use the same surface. Even though this surface is slightly different from the original, we can still use it because the objects will just stretch accordingly. I've set this up a little bit differently. My grid is a little larger with more segments. I've also set up these rings in place in two groups. One of them I'm going to raise slightly by adjusting it up half a millimeter from the others. This will help when it comes later to booleaning these objects together because it's difficult when they are too aligned. The grid I was using just to lay things out, but I'm going to hide that as well. We're going to start applying this onto the surface. I'll first check the direction just to make sure that it's not different from the others. It looks good. I'm going to select these two groups of objects with record history turned on. I'll then flow along surface, choosing that bottom corner and then the other corresponding corner. As these apply, they are going on rigid, so we're getting flat circles, which is not ideal. So I'll undo that. We'll use Flow Along Surface with the Record History turned on. Select the objects, press Enter, and this time we'll turn off rigid. Choose your starting base surface and then the target surface, and now they wrap onto the surface. We can adjust their position and it should update on the vase itself. We can also scale to get the positioning that we want. Let's look at the bottom to see how far it wraps around. With these rings in place, we can now create thickness by using the pipe command in the solid menu. I'm going to pipe them to 1.5 in diameter, press enter and I'll hide the underlying curves. We'll have a look at this in the rendered view just to see what it looks like. Remember too that we can remove the original surface and that I'm just going to hide as well to create an overall structure. As long as these are touching each other, they can be unioned to create a full solid object. Here's another one that I've spent time laying out a very specific pattern, making sure that the two ends will wrap around and meet each other, done by dividing the grid and then laying out the curves. I'll first hide the point grid, check the surface direction. I've laid these out as two separate elements, just in case we need to treat them differently or move them differently in relation to the surface. With the object selected, transform flow along surface. Remember to turn on the record history. We don't want these to be rigid. We want them to wrap around onto the surface. I'll select the base corner and a similar spot on the surface. Those are applied. And now we can adjust and move this the way we want it to appear. I'll have a look at the bottom just to make sure that they're not coming too close. It's never good to have these all meeting at the same point, so just keep it slightly away. Here I'm going to remove the base surface. That will take away the history so we can no longer make adjustments. With this curve structure in place, I'm going to use a different command under the sub D menu. Using multi pipe, I'll select all of the curves. At the same time, press enter. The radius, or half the diameter, will be 1, and then I'll press enter. 
The result is a fully piped closed object. This is what's known as a sub D object, but we can move it back into a regular poly surface by typing in the command two NURBS, and that's the geometry that poly surfaces follow. I'll press enter and we'll end up with a second object that we can then incorporate into other modeling techniques. Try out some of these techniques and then see if you can come up with your own possibilities. Thanks.